Today's video is going to cover redirects in Next.js. We're going to cover how they work when doing them in middleware here. We're also going to cover how they work in server actions as well as server components and route handlers. And then we'll cover client component redirects as well. So everything you want to know about redirects and probably even more. So here I just have a template Next.js application. And then that is running on localhost 3000. And I will post the code below. So if you want to check this repo out and kind of play around with some of these things, you can. But it's just a very kind of basic application to show examples. So we're going to start with redirects from server components as well as server actions as well as route handlers. This is going to work very similarly across all three of those different things. So here we have a server component. It represents a settings page. If I go to localhost 3000 and then we go to forward slash settings, you're going to see this is our settings page here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically kind of mock a user, creating a username here and then pressing submit. Now when they press submit, so this is going to be this code here, we render a form. And then within that form is our username and we have a button of type submit, and then we call this create username server action. And then if I command click on this and we enter this, you can see that it doesn't actually do anything, but in an actual application, we would do something here. But let's say in this instance that after the user creates a username, you want to then redirect the user somewhere else. Well, the way that you can do this is using the redirect function from next navigation here. So import redirect from next navigation. And then here you could do some logic to actually update their username or whatever you want to do in a server action. And then you can call this redirect function with a path that you want to redirect them to. And this can be a relative path. Here I'm just redirecting them to forward slash. So it's going to tell them that once they call this create username server action, redirect this user to the home page. So if we click on this submit button, it should redirect us back to the home page here and it does. So let's come back to settings, forward slash settings, and then I'll click submit. You see it's going to change from forward slash settings to just an empty forward slash like so. So it redirects us back to our home page. Now, if we wanted to do say redirect us to a login page, we can just do forward slash login and that's going to redirect us to this login page right here. So let's go back to forward slash settings and I'm going to click submit. And you see this time we go to our login page because we just passed the relative path that we want to redirect to. So pretty straightforward there. But one other thing that you're going to notice here, and this is within our server action, we also have this permanent redirect. And in the Next.js docs, and I'll also link the docs below that kind of goes through redirects and stuff, which is also a helpful resource. They cover this permanent redirect function. So I'm going to comment out redirect and I'm going to comment in permanent redirect. And it works the very same way as redirect does, except what it's supposed to be used for is when like a, a URL is going to be changing permanently and you want to redirect the user to that URL. So like an example of this is when let's say a user is at forward slash profile and let, maybe I'll just write it out here. So let's say the URL is localhost colon 3000 forward slash profile and then forward slash, let's say it's some username, the username of the user. But if they're sitting on their profile and it's based on their username, so you derive the URL from the username, but then they, they change the username. So say they change the username in the server action, well, the previous URL isn't going to exist anymore because it's going to be forward slash profile, forward slash, whatever the new username is. So in that instance, it would be a permanent redirect because the previous URL is going to be invalid because they just changed their username, which is going to change the derived URL. And then that's going to necessitate using the permanent redirect function. Now you import that from next navigation as well. And then you just pass a relative path. So you can see this is just forward slash here. And after I click submit, it still takes me to just forward slash. 
And if I put in login here, it's going to work the very same way. Where if we come back to forward slash settings and I click submit, it's now going to take us to login. So works the same way as redirect does, but it's for those cases to where it's going to be a permanent change in URL. And, you know, it, a common case of that is when a URL is based off of some kind of more dynamic value that maybe the user can change. Well, you want to then direct them to that new dynamic URL because the previous one isn't going to exist anymore. So it's going to be that permanent redirect there. So in this example, I showed you using this within a server action, but you're going to do the same sort of thing within like a server component. So our settings page is a server component. I can, you know, call redirect here and import that from next navigation. And we can use the same redirect within server components. And then this is going to be the same way that you're going to do things within a route handler as well. So server components, route handlers, as well as server actions, you're going to probably be using permanent redirect and redirect. When it comes to client components, so within my components folder, I have this home button, and this is a client component. The way that you're going to perform redirects is using the router. So you're going to import user router from next navigation. And then you need to create an instance of that at the top of your component. So here you see const router is equal to use router. And then to use this, you can call router.push and then pass in the relative path name that you want to push the user to. So you're using this push method. And this effectively redirects the user to wherever you push them to or whatever you pass in as an argument to dot push. Import use router from next navigation, create a new instance of it. So const router is equal to calling the use router hook, and then you can call router dot push, and then whatever relative URL you pass into dot push, that's gonna where you're gonna navigate them to. So in this instance, when I click this home logo button, it's gonna call this redirect to home function, which is just gonna call router dot push, to our home path. So if we come back and we go to our settings page, because this is where I'm rendering this, you can see our home logo if I click on it and navigates us back to our home path. So if I come to settings again, but this time around, say I want to go to our login page, I can just change our relative path here, just like what we did in our redirects here. You're just passing in a path right here, passing in the path right here. Now, if I click on it, it should take me to the login page here. So that's how you can do it within client components. And kind of the, the key giveaway is that we need to use a hook to get the router here. And anytime you need to use a hook, it's going to have to be within a client component. So use router and then use the router.push to perform your redirects or programmatic navigation when in client components. And then the final one to cover here, so we covered server components, server actions, route handlers, as well as client components. But now let's cover middleware. So in middleware, you can use the next response object, importing that from next server. So here I import next response from next forward slash server. And then here, I'm just kind of mocking it here but this is where you might check if a user is authenticated. So I'm saying const is authenticated equals to true. And then here I'm going to check if is the users authenticated, then just continue on, just kind of pass through this middleware and don't really do anything. And I could see I have a little typo with a four there, but just kind of pass through. But if, if the user is not authenticated, so it doesn't enter this if condition block here, then return next response and then next response has a redirect property on the next response object and then what you can do is you can paste in a url to redirect them to so in this case if the user is not authenticated redirect them to the login page so i'm constructing this new url by passing it the request.url which is basically going to be my base url and then i'm adding on the path here so the way this URL constructs is going to be the path name plus the base URL. Request URL plus this 
is going to equal low ghost 3000 forward slash login. And if you don't believe me, maybe I'll just cancel that log, the request.url, and then you can see that as well. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, is authenticated is, well, let's see what page we're on. So we're already on the login page. Let's go to the home page here, which I can go to because is authenticated is true. But if I set is authenticated is to false, then this middleware will run when I go to the home page because I have my matcher matching on the home page in the settings page here. So this middleware is going to run when I go to the home page. Is authenticated is going to be false. So it's not going to enter this right here. So it's not going to do an early return. So it's going to return next response dot redirect. And it's going to redirect it to this new URL here that we're passing into the redirect function. So if we come here and I refresh my page, you see we are routed to the login page because the user is not authenticated. They need to go log in. If I open up my terminal, you can see the console log of the request URL is a localhost 3000. So that is right here. So that's kind of like our base URL. And then the path that we want to redirect the user to is forward slash login. If for whatever reason, we wanted them to go to the settings page, then I can change that to forward slash settings. And if I try to go back to my homepage now, it's going to take us to our settings page, which you can see didn't quite work there. And the reason for that is because I have my settings down here. If we no longer check this, we should be able to go to my settings page just fine, which we can now go to. But what we're going to do is we're going to Keep running that on the settings page, but we'll take them back to the login page. So if the user tries to access this settings page here and I refresh, it's going to take us back to the login page because they're not authenticated. So to redirect in middleware, you can import next response from next server, and then you can use next response dot redirect and then construct a new URL to pass in to redirect. So just to recap quickly, in server components, as well as server actions, as well as route handlers, you can import redirect or permanent redirect from next navigation, and then just pass in a relative path to redirect to. Permanent redirect is for the kind of case we mentioned where the URL is gonna be permanently changing, else just use redirect. And then in client components, you are gonna import to use router from next navigation, create a new instance of that router, so const router is equal to use router. And then on the router object that's returned from use router, you can use the push method and then pass in a relative URL to redirect the user to. And then like we just covered in middleware, you can use next response dot redirect, importing that from next server and then passing in a full URL this time to next response dot redirect. So that's probably uh, more than you even wanted to know about redirects in Next.js, but hopefully you learned something and enjoyed this video. So thanks for tuning in to this and I'll see you in the next one.